Now, have you got your phone? Keep it safe. In an interview for Good Morning Britain, a gang leader claims he made £50,000 from just one stolen phone. Yeah, we're calling him Rich. It's not his real name. Uh, he told Bank of Dave star Dave Fishwick that he has a network of teenagers who use a technique called shoulder surfing to gain pin numbers before they steal the phone. So, Dave, you sat down with this gang member. Yes. It's revealed some quite disturbing information. Were you apprehensive? I wanted to get to the bottom of it. Yeah. I think you need to know how things, how broken things are so you can start fixing them. So I wanted to really embed myself in there and learn as much as I could. These were bad, bad people. Mm -hmm. But if we can learn from them how to stop the public being ripped off, we can then move forwards. They pay people £2,500 a day each to run the motorcycles, but that sends them to prison if they get caught. That's how much them people get paid that sit on a motorbike. Take a look at the methodology of this. This is interesting. Yeah, so, I've got my little team. They go and bring me phones and I'll buy the phones off them. They bring them back to you, and then what do you do then, Rich? Well, they don't have to bring them to me. They'll just phone me up and say, I've got these phones. They'll give me the numbers, the details, if they've got money on the phones. So you don't actually want the physical form? Not really, don't need them. From the boys know now what they've got to do, they've got to look on there. Certain apps, if they can get through and change the Apple passwords, they give me the account numbers of how much they've got on the account, and I'll give them the account numbers to send it to. Wow. OK, so we've also disguised the voice there and put on subtitles, subtitles to make it clear. But do you have any idea who these thieves are actually targeting? Mm. They're targeting everybody, from the poorest to the richest. You know, they're preying on the poor and vulnerable and they're taking off everybody. Mm. What are they doing is they're looking for bars, restaurants, clubs. They come up behind you, they look over your shoulder, they look for what number you're putting into your phone. Once they've got the phone, they've got you. Right. But they prey on Everybody. They target everybody. They have, they have no thought for what that person does or how much money you've got in your account. They don't care. Mm. They want your money. They want your phone. And him and his team are terrible people. Take a look at this next one. This will really shock you. Who are you looking for to get? West End. Why the West End? Lots of businesses. Not little bakeries or cafes, no. Big business. Describe that person. Who are you looking for? Who's your perfect victim? The person that's doing this on his phone, and then, yeah, that person. The person that's giving the phone, so now. Yeah. That person. That's my perfect victim. So you're not actually going grabbing it out the pocket, are you? No. You want them on the phone? Yeah. I suppose the point is they want you on your phone, because that means it's unlocked. They're also doing this shoulder surfing uh, so that they can see your PIN number. Because it used to be that it was the handset, it was the physical thing that was getting stolen, they could just pass that on. Now, your phone is like a treasure trove, isn't it? Absolutely. Of all of this financial information. All There's in there. Apps, passwords, account numbers, your bank account. And as he, he says there, he wants you to be slightly distracted. You know, you're on it, you're looking for some music, you've got your phone, you know, you've got your AirPods in. It, it, and it's out there. And then, of course, you're walking along the pavement and one of these young teenagers on a moped just swiftly goes past and they operate so quickly, don't they? Yeah, how many of them you see now? How many people are out there with the headphones on, they've got the phone, they're in, coming out of the gym yeah. like this, poof, gone. But let me tell you, when I said to him, I said, you know, how do you grab them? He said, put something there in front of me. Yeah. So I, I put my glasses. Yeah. I didn't trust him with my phone. <laughs> put my glasses there. And I, I'm not kidding, it was all, it, a real stretch away. Mm. And he went, poof. And that were quick, but I just didn't see it. He teaches them to be so quick like that. So if it's on the desk like that, poof, gone. 
and he runs like there's no tomorrow. Mm. People are on the and phones. And they're on mopeds, of course, or motorbikes. Yeah, so, or, or, I mean, some or of them can run as fast. You know, these, yeah. these guys are trained to run. They're on thousands of pounds a day. Yeah. It's their job. Mm. And that's the thing. They think they're an entrepreneur. They think they've got a mm. job. It's like somebody setting up a plumbing business. He was talking to me as if mm. he's got a business. Mm. And he's ripping people off, he's stealing from people. But they look over your shoulder, you're going like this, they've got your four digits, and then two seconds mm. later, choo, gone. Take a look at this. This is... Your Swift. phone's been snatched, it's gone. Out your back pocket in the car, but the pub, it's gone. So they come up on a motorbike or a scooter... And the phone's gone. Your oh. glasses, gone. That was fast. <laughs> I'm glad my phone weren't there. And that's it. It's gone. Are you not frightened of somebody re retaliating, though, if they, they grab you or try and fight you? Are you frightened? They're gone. They're not fighting. They're gone. Yeah, so there's no actual physical confrontation mm. once, once the phone's gone, yeah. I don't think they're frightened of physical confrontation. They're just so quick. Yeah. And so dedicated to that job they do where they're up and down and they're going for places where people have got money or they're going to places where people are going to be spending. Mm. But what's important here is let's tell the public what's, mm. how they can keep things safe. Yeah. Because right at the beginning, when I asked him in the interview, um, I said, how can I protect the public? How can I give them the best advice? And he said, I'm not going to tell you that. That's how I make my money. <laughs> Towards the end of the interview, I was with him a long time. And I really pushed him. And he said, I'll tell you what to do. I'll tell you what to do. And this is what the public must do. And I've started doing it myself. You want some really cheap earbud phones that Bluetooth to your phone. Put them in your ears. They're not going to steal them. You want an iPhone watch or something similar on your wrist. You then take your phone and put it in your inside pocket out of the way mm. of your coat, zip your coat up. If your phone rings, you can take the call off your watch. It goes Bluetooth to your ears. You can't get anywhere near your phone. If you can't get into your phone, mm. he then can't take your apps mm. and he can't take your banking details. He wants to steal your identity. Right. He wants to get into that. They make 20, 30, 40,000 a day mm. from stealing your identity. Have, you have we got a little clip here of him telling us about this? Let's take a look at Should this we have one. a look, Dan? What can he or she do with her or his phone to keep it safe? Keep it out of sight. You know, you've got 1,300 pounds ball it's snatched. You know, look before you take it out. Does that not make sense? Makes a huge amount of sense. <laughs> yeah, people don't do it. It's so obvious, isn't it, Dave? But, the, you know, keep your phone out of sight, particularly when you're walking in public or if you're at a restaurant, don't put it on the table. Because the other thing, of course, that they do is come up at the table, put a newspaper over your phone, and as they go away, take, pick it oh. up and, yeah, take your phone away at the same time. It's shocking. It, the, the advice is obvious, and yet we all need to be told. And I think the amount of money that he is making out of this and the exploitation... Hundreds of thousands. Hundreds of thousands. The hundreds exploitation of, of these youngsters, uh, as well, is pretty shocking. Does he have any guilt about what he's up to? I asked him that. I said, do you feel guilty? What about people? You look in the phone, you're about to steal the thousands of pounds they've got. Or if they've got very little in the account, mm. clearly they're struggling in life. That, that child that you're stealing the phone off might have had that for Christmas. It might have been a gift. Uh, that might be the last few hundred pounds they have. And that might be something they're going to buy their food bill with this week. And also, of course, they can use all of that information to scam other financial, you know, get out loans they, or they, That's what they do. They take your identity. Yeah. They have no guilt. He said, Dave, I don't care. I want your phone. I want their money. I'm mm. going to take everything. And I said, surely the people who are really struggling in life, you, know, you shouldn't be taking off anybody, but surely the people who are really mm. struggling had disliked him with a passion. Mm. But I needed to understand how we can fix this, mm. to start getting into these gangs and learning how we can start breaking them down. Um, but the guilt, he has none. He doesn't care. Just take a look at this. Back in the day, when I'm hungry, and the girl's pregnant, and the government ain't really giving me no money. Yeah. Who, who feels guilty for me? 
Well, I'm sure the people watching it aren't going to feel guilty. Um, but I'm just wondering if you ever get that guilt trip and think, you know, I've took that, that, that kid's phone and he's probably got it for Christmas or whatever. And, or do you, is it pure business? It's business. Oh, it's so mm. horrible. She genuinely really thinks he's a businessman, doesn't he? Really and he's putting him in prison for 30 years. You know, this is really useful, and I think this has been a really useful exercise to really realise what's going on and for us to learn. We're in a fight with these guys, aren't we? Yes. We're in a fight with these criminals. You've got to be aware and of we've your got surroundings. To be, uh, we've yeah. got to be ten steps ahead of them, and yeah. that's the thing. I mean, I was saying to Susanna earlier, I get off the train now, get in a train, wherever I'm around the tube, whatever, phone's in the pocket, and, I, you know, and I'll sometimes just walk into a shop if I really need to check directions or something. I just try not to be into a public place because I, I, I hate losing my phone. It'd be the worst thing ever. When I, when I met them, I mean, Carl Hemp and Kate Hemp, way have worked really hard on this with me and I need to give them a big shout. We've worked so hard yeah. but keep keep people really safe. Bye. Keep your phone hidden. If you are going to use it put your back against the wall. This is what the Metropolitan Police say. Don't stand too near the curb. You know and if you're really, really, really careful and hold it, that makes a huge difference. They can see that you know right. they're stalking you. They're looking over your shoulder. They're everywhere. It's the fact that they act in packs, don't they? Listen, yes. Dave, this has been really useful. Before you go, we've heard a little bit of a rumour. You're a swift mover. We've seen, we've seen the sort of swiftness you do with Is this Is that guy. the little birdie telling that's, you that's a little in your ear? That's a little birdie in my ear. Um, dancing. Strictly, on, are you going to do Strictly Come Dancing? Come we've got on. Karen and we've, Gorka in. Would you like to dance with we've Karen? We've heard that you might be interested. Would you do it? Come I, on. I just can't say anything. I've been so much trouble. I can't believe... I thought you were going to ask me about the musical. <laughs> I've just announced the Bank of Dave musical. Where's oh, that right? going to be? And that starts next year. Jason Manford's going to play me. Oh, wow. that is terrific. That's yes. Amazing. And that starts next year. Myself and David H are going to be in it, but not us in it. Obviously, somebody playing us. But it's really exciting. It's being made by the people that make Kinky Boots oh, and wow. the people that make Winnie the Pooh, uh, the, 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 the new musical, and it's just the people that made Sure. They're making it. So it's a massive musical. Brilliant. It's coming out next summer. Brilliant. I'm going to put my best dancing shoes on and singing microphone and hopefully I'll get a little piece in it. <laughs> Yeah. Good luck. And I'm we... not talking about the other one. <laughs> <laughs> My lips are sealed yeah. about Strictly Come Dancing. Yeah. Not, not allowed a, to say anything. It's yeah. not a no. Yeah. It's not a no. It's not allowed to say anything, he said. Uh, Dave, it is great to see you. Thank you so Thank much you for, for doing Thank you for inviting that. us. I think one of the problems is, particularly when you're doing directions, you've got the map app open, haven't mm. you, and you're, like, following. Mm. Please put your phones away. I'm going to keep it you know, in the bag or in a pocket. Dave, thanks so much. It's a public service you do for us. I love it. And do you know what? The team here at GMB have worked so hard on this. Brilliant. You know, the new stories that we're going to be bringing over the coming months are going to be very powerful and we want to help as many members of the public as possible. So a big, big cheer to, to Kate and, and Carl and all the team here, yourselves, all you right. do a massive service. Thank you. Thank you so much, Dave. Thank you, Dave.